Chapman, Jimmy Johnson leading Dale Earnhardt Jr. And here's how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring, all still running. Daniel Suarez is one lap down, as is Denny Hamlin. Everybody else is on the lead lap, and due to pit stop strategy, this should change quite a bit between now and lap 200. Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the point. Elliot Sadler, Jimmy Johnson. Chase Elliott, Chris Buescher, five Chevrolets in front. Most of the Toyotas and Fords have already made a pit stop under green in this second stage. Seems like some of these guys, like Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., these guys seem like they're doing it the conventional way, 60 laps, 60 right. laps. Everybody else, Fords, Toyotas, they seem to be playing a little bit of game here, trying to figure out if there is a winning strategy. Elliott Sadler is a regular in the Xfinity series that ran here yesterday. <laughs> NASCAR's AAA series. Sadler won stage one. He won stage two and appeared on his way to victory. Got caught up in a crash late in the race. Did not finish. This is a one-off drive for Sadler with Tommy Baldwin racing. Baldwin, second generation racer, was one of NASCAR's charter teams last year. This year he'll make sporadic appearances here in the Cup Series and also run a bunch of races with his beloved modifies. Right now, kids eat free. <laughs> hey, Mike, Daryl, Jeff, these guys that are going on conventional strategy, they're going to have to pit here in about the next six to eight laps because that's the fuel window. 44 to 48 laps. They pit it on lap 63. We went back in lap 67. So they're within just a few laps of having to make green flag stops. Lap 39 of 60 in stage two. So those boards pitted at lap 30 of 60 in this stage, lap 90 of the race. You know, it's just a dangerous game that these others are playing by. by Any time you pit early, there's a chance if a caution comes out, if something goes wrong, you could very possibly be a lap down. If this stage goes all the way to the end, they're probably going to be in good shape. I, I really think it's almost like they're running this race backwards, you know, trying to figure out how do I get to the front? Where do I get my track position at the end of the day? And maybe they think this strategy, the Toyotas and the Fords, is going to get them there. Cliff Boyer earlier had contact, and he was concerned if that's really affecting the aerodynamics on the right rear.
take some risks to do that. He's going to have to put himself in a vulnerable position. So he's got to weigh out that risk versus reward. And I think right now, you know, he's in a pretty good position and maybe just feels like it's not quite worth it. And there's not enough cars lined up behind him to really manipulate how he can get that run down. Yeah, I mean, Dale Jr. is one of the smartest restrictor plate racers that I've watched in a long, long time. He knows when to make that move, and he knows this is not the time. Why do I want to race people that, are, that can't beat me? At this point, anyway, I might turn around later on, but they can't beat me right now. They're on the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, well, once the Chevrolets come down pit road, it's going to be a whole new race. And you know what? They're going to jockey for position as well and, and try to make sure that they get back to the front and leave this stage and get some extra points. We may see some stops this time among the Chevy teams. 16 laps to go in stage two. No takers at the front of the pack. At the back of the pack, here comes a bunch. A covey of quails coming in there. Ten cars in all coming to the pit lane. Eric Almarola in a four. There's Brendan Gong, Trevor Bain, Ryan Newman, A.J. Allmendinger, Austin Dillon, and Clint Boyer is also in. Oh my God, Kyle! Just got no, a little a bit from freaking tie. Did, did he make contact? Did he make contact with that car he was passing? That's a good question. I, 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 I didn't see any, but nope. uh, we can look at it again. He, he's Man. just right there. He's all by himself. Now watch. All of a sudden, that car goes around like a like like a left rear tire it maybe does. went down. Before that, he and Michael McDowell were pretty close Whoa. together. Oh, yeah, Junior, Junior. Junior. Yeah. Go up on Woo. two wheels. Jimmy Johnson on the scoots through. Junior, Eric Jones. Eric Jones done. Kyle Busch is gone. Kyle done. Kenseth done. Ty Dillon done. And Junior is done. Here's what Kyle had to say. Dismissed by Elliott Sadler in the 7, a wild ride for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88. Right here, right up and over the nose of Kyle Busch's car. Wow. Boy, I tell you, that was, that was lucky. Now, under the crash damage policy, they can make repairs to Jr.'s car on pit road, but they cannot replace parts with new parts. As Kyle Busch climbs out, look at the splitters all bent up. Right side, right front corner, sheet metal gone. And how much suspension damage has he 
climbed right over the nose of Kyle Busch. You see a 3,400, 3,500-pound car go up on two wheels. You know he's made a lot of contact, and it's going to cause a lot of damage. Yeah, unfortunately for Ty Dillon, too. He was having a pretty good run. He got caught up in that. I really thought Matt Kenseth might get a, another shot at it after last year just coming up short there at the end. Uh, that's not going to happen now. Harry Jones finally got his car where it was pretty competitive, keeping up with the leaders, running with them, and then he gets in this. It's not going to drive very good, but will it make minimum speed? That's the only question on their minds right now. Yeah, that's doubtful. The minimum speed is a lap at 56 seconds. That's 20% slower than race pace. Jamie? Well, we heard Kyle Busch's radio say right rear. Kyle, did you have any indication leading into that issue? No, it... I wish I would have. If I would have, I would have tried to wave off as many guys behind as I could, but it happened just as soon as we started picking up load into turn three and just spun around. Um, you know, I actually felt like I hung onto it for a long ways, and then finally it went. You know, I don't know if it was the left rear that went down or the right rear that went down, but, man, tore up uh, <laughs> three JGR cars in one hit and also junior, you know, so I, I feel bad, horrible for those guys, but, man, um, nothing nothing that we did wrong. You know, obviously Goodyear tires just aren't very good at holding air, so it's... Um, very frustrating when we have that down here every single year we've been here. Last year we had it as well, too. It wrecked us in practice and tore up a car. A few cars, actually, were in that as well. So um, the 7M's Camry, though, we were just biding our time, playing it out, trying to see what the strategies we're going to do with the segments. Um, thankfully, we have, a, I guess, a segment point, you know, out of this day. That's a positive. But, man, you're trying to win the Daytona 500 here, you know, and um, that's just so disappointing. All right, now Kyle Busch, because of the new NASCAR policy, even though he drove back to the garage, he will go to the medical center to be checked and evaluated. Thanks, Jamie. For the second day in a row, as in yesterday's Xfinity Series race, the winner of Stage 1 will not be around to see the checkered flag. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is back out onto the racetrack, so when he crossed the line at the end of pit road, the crash clock stopped, and he'll have a chance to get up to minimum speed. Now, Elliot Sadler is the race leader. He snuck right through the middle of all that. Did a terrific job. Remember the last time a seven car was leading a race at Daytona? Been a while, but it was when... Let's uh, take a look at there. how Jimmy Johnson's spotter helped him worry less through this with Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. <laughs> Great to awesome. Upgrade. 
If your energy drain just isn't getting it done, or you're ready for more, upgrade to extra strength, five hour energy. Upgrade. Try it once, and you'll know why we say upgrade to awesome. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, it's mine though. Upgrade to extra strength, five hour energy. The innovations that define human history can be traced back to one moment of inspiration when we controlled fire, had the curiosity to explore, or fought sickness and death. Very smart for the humanity starts here. Origins, the journey of humankind. New series Monday, March 6th at 9 on National Geographic. Today, Unlimited gets the network it deserves. Verizon. Uh, sorry. It's unlimited without compromising reliability on the largest, most advanced 4G LTE right network in America. Under a red flag. It's for last what the phone It's says. just forty-five dollars per line. Forty-five. And that is all the microphones that I have. Unlimited on Verizon. Four lines, just forty-five dollars per line. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the American Petroleum Institute. Visit PowerPastImpossible.org. Now, this week has been a special one as our new series title sponsor, Monster Energy. Put on an amazing smoke show yesterday for the fans of the Speedway. Monster Energy brought all their toys out to the fan zone. That included getting uh, Jamie Lynn Spears inside the ball of steel. Daytona for a five car pile up in turn three started when Kyle Busch lost a tire Eric Jones, Matt Kenseth collected him, Dale Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr. hopped up and over Ty Dillon also involved Jones the 77